On Root Sports is presented by Lexus. The new 2016 Lexus ES and ES Hybrid. It's next level luxury. And by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing too high. Orbit is not hiding tonight. Right out in the open as game two of the Astros Rangers series comes your way from it in Maid Park. Texas took the 4 to 3 12 inning extravaganza last night. Now the Astros have slipped back into third place and here at Minute Maid Park where the record is 40 and 32 they're looking for a turnaround. They would love to go on a nice late season winning streak right now. Here's the starting lineup for the visiting Texas Rangers who have a nine and a half game lead on second place Seattle. Carlos Gomez leads it off and plays center field with Nomar Mazzara in left field. Carlos Beltran in right, Adrian Beltre the DH, Ruth Neto Dor at second, Mitch Moreland at first, Elvis Andrews the shortstop, Jerickson Profar at third, Robinson Chirinos the catcher, and A.J. Griffin on the mound. It's Brad Peacock, 28-year-old right-hander on the hill for the Astros tonight, making his second start in an Astros uniform this year after pitching his season at AAA. Against the uh, Texas Rangers lifetime, Brad Peacock, has made four starts five appearances overall one and three against these Texas Rangers they've hit 260 against him and Brad trying to find that strike zone early at times that can be his issue just simply throwing quality strikes. Last time out at Cleveland he gave up one run in three and two thirds innings first pitch is strike one Angel Hernandez the home plate umpire rings it up on Gomez Gomez a 212 hitter has nine homers 41 runs batted in. Bunting. He fouls it. And it's 0 and 2 to Carlos. He has been leading off in recent games for the Rangers. Had a leadoff homer a few games ago, the fourth career leadoff home run of his career. But thinking bunt there, he falls behind now, 0 and 2. In fact, he hit a couple of homers Saturday against the Angels on the road. Peacock strikes him out. This was not the pitch Brad Peacock wanted to make. He throws the slider and just loops it right up through the heart of the plate. I mean, you'd have to shuffle that just a bit, maybe northwest to be dead center on the plate. So a fortunate strikeout. No, Mar Mazzara is next. Mazzara in left field is hitting 211 on this road trip. 270 for the season, 17 homers, 57 runs batted in after a very good start in his rookie season. And there's ball one. Mazzara last night was 0 for 3. Omar, 21 years old, looks at that for strike one, one and one. Zara homered in his first major league at bat. He was called up from Shinsu Chu went on the disabled list earlier this season. Chu is now out for the season, and Mazara has played an awful lot. Two and one to Nomar. Three balls and a strike. Peacock, when he made that three and two-thirds inning start last time out Tuesday at Cleveland, he had pitched in relief. In the minor leagues and had two days rest. That's why he didn't stay in the game longer. Mazzara takes a one out walk. He's on for Carlos Beltran. AJ Hinch hoping for a double play ball here. Beltran was one for four, driving in a run, drawing a walk in last night's game. He bounced into a double play. The Astros. Turned four double plays in that one last night. Carlos said 298 has 27 homers, 87 runs batted in, and he's slugging 518. Infield shifts around. Alex Bregman is where the shortstop often plays. Ball one on the fastball with Adrian Beltre on deck. Last 12 games, Carlos Beltran has hit 390. Three homers, four doubles, and 14 runs batted in in those dozen games. In for a strike to even the count at one and one. The Rangers have dominated the Astros 14 to three in their head to head series this season. The Rangers have won six of seven at Minute Maid Park. One and two. Must be something about that slider right now from Peacock to see Beltron swing through it. Unusual. Yeah. 
And that one also caught a fair amount of home plate. Tron has hit 340 against Houston pitching. That's rolled out to second, charged by Altuve, backhanded flip, Correa on to first, double play over to Guriel, and that hits number five of this series for the Astros. Only three face Peacock in the first, it's scoreless. Starting lineup for A.J. Hinch brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Right fielder George Springer, third baseman Alex Bregman, second baseman Jose Altuve, shortstop Carlos Correa, first baseman Yuli Gurriel, D.H. Evan Gaddis, center fielder Colby Rasmus, left fielder Marwin Gonzalez, catcher Jason Castro. On the mound for these Rangers, right-hander, 28 years of age, A.J. Griffin, 7-4 and four on the year, ERA just under the five mark against the Astros on his career. Some phenomenal figures, 5 and 0, oh, despite an ERA over five, four and a half, and a, a great batting average against. Foul back by George Springer on the first pitch. The Astros have hit just 218 against this righty. He has held right handed hitters to a 210 batting average. Springer at 255 has 26 homers. One ball, one strike. Has been impressive with some swings leading off games with those seven lead off homers. That leads the American League. Backhanded Elvis Andrews. One out for Griffin. These top four Astros hitters did nothing last night. 0 for 18, Ash. Yeah, big 0 for 5 for Altuve, too. Watch this pitch where it is. George had a great swing. Terrific pitch to be able to jump on, but got over the top of it. Bregman had his 10 game hitting streak come to an end last night, going 0 for 5 himself, 265, 8 homers, 32 runs batted in. He had reached base in 25 consecutive games. That was third best for an Astros rookie all time. Now trying to start a brand new streak. He fouls that one back. There's strike one to Bregman. Bregman's hit 333 against the Rangers. One homer, six runs batted in. Griffin has had nine no decisions. That's third among the Rangers this year. Gets a swing there, and he's ahead in the count, 0 and 2. The Astros have hit just 223 against Texas pitching this year. Averaging under four runs per game against the Rangers. One and two. This Ranger pitching staff has the 11th best ERA in the American League at 4.40. It is a, an odd set of numbers that the Astros have not been able to handle these guys like the rest of the league has. Two and two. Do you have any theories on that? I, I really don't, uh, other than to say that I've been 
on a club that uh, just really struggled against another team and psychologically something was going on. Three balls two strikes. Griffin's 28 and 15 for his major league career with a 3.96 ERA. Fastball fouled away keeps the count full. That for example was a very good pitch to handle in that count or any count for that matter. And yet against the Texas Rangers it simply fouled back to the screen. Hugh Darvish is scheduled for tomorrow night for Texas. That one's fouled back. Joe Musgrove is slated to go for Houston. After losing last night, the Astros really need to put some games together with 18 games remaining. Five teams ahead of them in the wild card race. Foul back, and the count remains full. They came back to get that one out ninth inning homer by Evan Gaddis to tie it at three, but then Texas got the root Ned Odor homer in the 12th. Taking a look at our MD Anderson strike zone as we watch this pitch come in. And it's popped up out toward the left field line. Mazzara legging it over, reaches back, and he overran it, but still was able to make the catch. Two outs. We saw Mazzara in Arlington against the Astros last time these two clubs got together, and Mazzara had a rough time with a couple of balls down the right field side. Uh, some of the gloss is coming off of him defensively. Eventually makes the play, but not your standard style. Well, the Polish judge only gave him a 1.2 on that. Well, that's a little tough, but All right. you know you have to take into consideration he did ultimately make the play. True. Let's get this bat going, Brownie. 337, still leading the league, but the lead is down to seven points in the batting race over Dustin Pedroia, Jose Altuve. Has 23 homers, 93 runs batted in, really struggling. And the curveball is wide, four ball one. He still leads in hits with 192. Still has some great numbers, but went 0 for 5 last night. Twice he grounded out to third. You covered that on your earlier segment as we came on the air. Upstairs, 2 and 0. Nobody tries harder than Jose Altuve. He takes it to heart. There's no question. You needn't ever think that he or any of the guys aren't trying. But at some point, you come out of that that terrible funk you can get into. Wouldn't that be something if he went on a roll and the club went on a roll? Two balls and a strike. Well, I would say it uh, kind of follows suit for me. If Altuve gets to playing extremely well, the club's got a great chance of winning on that given night. Never thought I would see a defense like that against yeah. Jose Altuve. That is unusual. Strike makes it two and two. Unless you're going to pitch that way. And that's that combination of pitching in if you're going to put on the, the shift like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I love seeing that. Altuve hits a curveball and there is a good swing. He's been victimized. By curveballs down in the zone. That time Altuve wins the battle and it's a two out single. Where I've said in the inning and throughout games between these two clubs that the Astros are just not hitting pitches they can handle. As we look at the Super Bowl presented by Mattress Firm, Altuve actually hits a very tough pitch. That breaking ball, you can see the catcher reaching down just above the ground to be able to handle this pitch. And yet Altuve, when he gets it going, it doesn't matter. He'll put the barrel on everything. Excellent job. Carlos Correa is the batter. Correa at 274 has 19 homers, 90 runs batted in. There's ball one. He did draw a couple of walks and scored a run last night, but the top four in the lineup, a collective 0 for 18 with three walks in a rough game. I don't know if that's happened this season. To these four in the lineup together. But a real strength of the team offensively. Two balls, no strikes. Well, when you put those nights together, as you talk about from last night, 
you're fortunate for the Astros to score three runs in a game like that. Sure enough. That's over shortstop out to Mazzara in left center field. Or out number three. No runs a hit and a man left. No score after one. and Astros put on your running shoes and join us for the badges and bases 5k and 10k run at Minute Maid Park on Saturday September 12th kids 12 and under can enter the kids fun run and everybody gets a commemorative t-shirt visit Astros.com slash run for more info Brad Peacock is back to work after getting through the first pretty easily there with the help of the defense behind him you know guys the slider is the big pitch that we've heard Brad talk about as well as the, the coaching staff Pitching coach Brent Strom has talked about it for years now. That's that's been what he's trying, trying to get a little sharper, throw it a little harder. We saw him last year or maybe two years ago, babying a little bit, and he even admitted to that. I've got to throw it harder. So that was something he focused on all season long in, in AAA. He wanted to get it uh, to where it needed to be to pitch against these major league hitters. And this is a pitch that can be good against these Rangers. He's just got to execute. Well, trade down on a knee, and he cranks one into the Crawford boxes. One nothing Rangers Adrian Beltre hits his 30th home run of the season. That's his 97th run batted in and it's one nothing Texas. I don't know if Beltre was looking for this pitch in particular. He clearly didn't miss any of it but it was the slider that Julia was just talking about and it's the one that we saw strike out Carlos Gomez. In this case it gets destroyed. That looping slider that starts upward instead of downward out of the hand to give the perception of the fastball you'll hear cement mixer used and it's very appropriate in this case. One nothing Rangers they've homered in 15 straight games now 197 homers for them this year 30 for Beltre another big milestone for him. Rugnet Odor who hit his 31st last night leads the club 282 with 85 runs batted in for Odor. Infield shifts around. That pitch off the plate takes the count to 2 and 0. Oh. Uh, that was Beltre's third career homer off Peacock and his 11th at bat off Brad. 22nd homer for him against Houston pitching. This liner is fair into the right field corner. Kicks out toward George Springer. Odor's going to challenge him. Here's Springer with the throw and it's offline. A double for Odor. He had three hits last night and three runs batted in, including the game winning homer. And now starts this game with his 31st double. What Odor has done against the Astros and you would assume against other clubs is handle pitches out over the plate. In this case it's right about through the heart of the plate down around the knees. But when he extends usually you're talking about big guys extending but Odor is a big guy in a small man's body. He's got that great extension swing. Odor in scoring position for Mitch Moreland now. The shift remains on for the Astros. Moreland 
is a pull hitter. There's ball one to him. He's hit 22 homers and he's added 21 doubles with 58 runs batted in. A little different shift in the fact of where Bregman is playing. He's closer to third than he was in the previous shift. But he has to be aware of the possibility of a steal of third by Odor. And Odor is a guy who can pill for a bag. He has 12 and 18 tries. One ball, one strike. Rangers do some running. They have 84 stolen bases. That's fourth in the American League. Moreland's one home run shy of matching his career high. He's hit 23 homers in a season twice. Peacock turns. The door back to the bag. Peacock's career he's one and three against the Rangers with a 3.76 ERA. Fastball with some good hop. It's a foul tip and it's one and two. The Astros have had one starting pitcher go more than five innings in the last 12 games. Rip foul. Elvis Sanders is on deck. Rangers are four and four on their 10 game road trip. They're shooting for win number 87 of the season. They've lost 59 with their 86 wins for Jeff Bannister. They have played well against teams with good records. Bannister's club 59 and 30 against teams at 500 or better this season. Foul ball. Texas shooting for its second straight American League West title and currently has the best record in the league. So that would put the Rangers in a possible home field advantage situation all throughout the postseason if they can maintain this pace. They've beaten the Astros in 22 of their last 27 meetings. Odor dancing off second, and that's a swing and a miss, a strikeout, number two for Peacock. Ball out of the strike strike zone picks up that strikeout. Andrews with a 291 average has drilled five homers. He's driven in 61 runs. His career high is 67 runs batted in. And this batting average would be a career high for him if he can maintain it. Elvis was 0 for 5 last night. Batting ninth last night. Andrews looks at ball one with Jerks and Profar on deck. Andrews was up to 298 on his batting average five games ago. He's gone two for 18 though. You see Rasmus positioned in right center. Odor dancing off second. And it's 2 0. Talked last night about the fact that the Rangers have averaged over five runs a game against the Astros this year. That's a little better than they've done on the season. They're a good run scoring unit, fourth best in the league. The Boston Red Sox are the only team averaging over five runs a game, and they're well over five and a half runs a game. So they're kind of the elite club when you talk offense. They sure are. Altuve's playing close to the bag at second. Try to keep the base runner a little bit closer. Odor is taking some liberties. Fly ball out to left field. Marlon Gonzalez underneath. Two outs. Yeah, you know, just uh, wondering. Altuve went to the mound and said something to Peacock, and then when he went back to his position, I think it was a little different than it had been. So probably because of the base runner and. I would imagine the Astros with all the shifting they do and the players knowing where to play 
give Altuve some liberty to do that, correct? Or do you know? Yeah, I would think so. I would think Carlos Correa has that as well. Um, but there are times when you've got to be able to keep a guy near the bag. Yeah. You can't allow a club to just kind of take over on you offensively. Jerks and Profar, 251, five homers, 18 runs batted in. He moves around and plays different positions. He's at third base tonight. He didn't play last night. That one stopped as it arrives in the dirt at the feet of Jason Castro. Ball one to Profar. That's that uh, slider in the dirt and ideally Castro's dropping to his knees sliding to his right but in this case coming up successful just backhanding out of the dirt. Brent Strom out to pass along some ideas. And a lot of times this is about sessions in between. Remember the other day when we you were thrown in the pen and you did such and such and we talked about it. You have got to be able to get back to that point. Otherwise it's going to be a short night for you. Starting pitching really critical at this stage for the Astros. Tony DeFrancesco is standing alongside A.J. Hinch. Triple A Fresno manager up for a September call up. That's a good spot and it's one ball one strike. Tony D wearing number 88 this September. Great guy. Well, he's got a vital role in this organization. Developing talent. We had a nice conversation with him today talking about some of the the really good players he's managed through the minor leagues. Yeah. Managed a long time at Triple A. Two balls and a strike. And uh, managed on an interim basis for the Astros a few years ago. A very good man. He seems to feel there's a difference in the baseballs being used in the minor leagues versus those in the big leagues. Yeah, that was interesting yeah. to hear that. Said the uh, major league balls are harder. Uh, easier to, to be able to be impressive offensively with. That should be a strike right there. And there there may be, yeah, I was going to say there may be two in this sequence that could have, should have been called strikes. Look at number three, that's a strike, and number four is a strike. Talking about any part of the ball catching that strike zone. Oh, that puts Peacock in a 3 1 hole here. He pulls it out to there. Two in the second inning with a Beltre homer making it Texas 1, Houston nothing. Of a major league career, Jose Altuve back in 11, 
hit 333. He was 21 at the time. Carlos Correa last year at the age of 20 hit 301 in those first 19 games. Yuli Gurriel, very impressive. The youngster at 32 years of age is hitting 344 over his first 19 games. So off to a very fine start. One nothing Rangers. The Astros come up with Gurriel leading it off in the home second inning. He's on a nine game hitting streak. Taking ball one, Guriel 344, three homers, eight runs batted in. And a fabulous start to his major league career. He comes in to even the count at one and one, his 344 average, as you saw, the highest by an Astro over his first 19 games in the majors. Since Hunter Pence with 356 in his first 19 games in 07. That was a, quite a memorable debut for Pence, but here's Doug Rader hitting 403 in his first 19 games to lead the pack. Josh Anderson in 07 at 373. Then Pence, Julio Gonzalez, 355. That's a surprise. And he was a pretty slick infielder. Yeah, he was. Foul tip strikeout. Strikeout number one for Griffin. Griffin had home run problems. His last start in Seattle. He got roughed up in that one, didn't he? Yep. Gave up eight earned runs in four innings, three homers. He may be pitching for his spot in the rotation. Evan Gaddis, 246, 26 homers, 61 runs batted in. Carries a three game hitting streak into this one. He hit his 26th homer last night with one out in the ninth off closer Sam Dyson to tie the game. Strike one on the fastball from Griffin. Griffin has allowed a 340 batting average on his fastball since the All Star break. It's one and one. But in his career, he's never lost to Houston. 5 and 0 oh despite a 4.54 ERA. Curveball is wide and it's 2 and 1. Last time Griffin faced the Astros, he stayed with the fastball curveball approach. But usually against other teams, he works in cutters and changeups. Three balls and a strike. The stuff is not in the category of being overpowering. He's the kind of guy that, as a hitter, you say, Yeah, I see him well. Uh, he's looking for one of those good nights. Fastball is there for strike two. Well spotted heater. It's 90 miles an hour. So again uh, there's nothing you have to dial up on with this guy. Griffin's 28 is from El Cajon California and the University of San Diego had Tommy John surgery and missed 2014. That's on the corner and a strikeout two in a row. Yeah, I don't think Evan agreed with that call fastball well spotted but maybe off the edge. Let's take our peek at it. And it's really close and one you shouldn't take with two strikes. But was it a strike? Probably not. Don't want to get Angel too stirred up. He may not be an Angel. 211, 15 homers, 54 runs batted in. Curveball strike one to Colby. Colby with a 270 average against this Ranger club has two homers, five runs batted in. Foul back, and it's 0 2. Colby drew a pinch walk in the seventh inning last night, and then Tony Kemp followed as a pinch hitter and knocked in a run with a double. The Astros. Didn't get the most out of that double though. It bounced over the right field fence. They would have been able to get the tying run home had it not gone out of play. And they wound up stranding two runners at second and third in the inning. Two balls, two strikes. That's a, the, a lot of the story against these two clubs is things that the Astros don't do offensively. And Texas has beaten Houston. 12 times by one run last year and this year combined. Three and two. 
the Astros in fact are one in seven and one run affairs this year between the two clubs. The Rangers have just had a way in those tight games anyway throughout the league. But they have dominated in, in that regard against Houston. Rasmus punches out and that's a strike out of the side by Griffin and a one nothing Texas lead through a couple. leading the Astros and we've seen Carlos Correa do some incredible things defensively last night showing off the arm which got us thinking which position player would you like to have as a starting pitcher these guys can throw hard on this team it's our Chevy stroke Paul follow us at root sports SW to vote we start with Correa and that play he made last night to get the investment at first and of course George Springer in the mix the right fielder has a great arm has lots of outfield assists has helped this club out a ton Jake Marisnik who does it all in the outfield for him. You see and then Colby Rasmus the lefty a little different look with Colby. We've seen him help the club in many ways as well guys. This is a fun one. Please vote. We'll tell you who wins later in the All right. Thanks Julia Robinson Chirinos leads it off here in the top of the third inning one nothing Texas. That's ball up for ball one Chirinos at 209 has eight homers 18 runs batted in giving Jonathan Lucroy a night off at catcher. Lucroy had two hits in last night's game. It's a one ball one strike count. Peacock had a career high 11 strikeout game here at Houston against Texas in May of 2014. But he lost that one for nothing. Altuve to his left. Looks to Guriel, one out. Last night, Doug Fister went five innings, and then the bullpen came in. Devensky, Feliz, Gregerson, Harris, Giles. All pit scoreless ball until James Hoyt gave up the game winner in the 12th. Carlos Gomez drawing booze comes around for the second time. He struck out leading off the game. He hits a fair ball and kicks out and here's Marlon Gonzalez and here's Gomez. The throw is offline and Gomez is safe. A double is 19th of the year. Now there's that slider again that got Gomez on strikes the first time this time no Missy on this one. Marwin tries to make a do or die effort. He's got a very strong throwing arm. Had he put it on line, maybe a shot. That's three hits now for the Rangers, all extra base hits. Omar Mazzara drew a walk in the first. Ball one to Mazzara. Left-handed hitters are hitting 318 against Peacock, who had just 10 and a third innings. 
with the Astros coming into this start tonight his second start of the year. Dallas Keuchel is not throwing right now but that may change in a few days Lance McCullers is playing catch on flat ground now. But not throwing from a mound yet either. So both playing the waiting game. Hoping that things heal so they can go ahead and throw from a mound. Two balls no strikes. Here was McCullers last night playing catch. And he's doing this from a pretty good distance but. Has not been on a mound yet and just don't know if we're going to see him again this year. He may be able to pitch in relief later three balls no strikes. Huge loss for the club uh, I, I think in all of our assessments. You lose Lance McCullers you, you lose an ace type guy in your rotation. And of course obvious with Dallas Keuchel. Good quality pitch there and it's three and one to Mazzara. Gets the call on this low riding fastball. Just a piece of the strike zone and an appropriate call. Peacock is 28 years old born in Palm Beach Florida. He gets strike two on Mazzara. A little more tilt to that slider Ash it looked like anyway. Yeah and that tilt being that angle downward if you can get that pitch started downward it tends to really break in that direction. And to this point up until that one he's getting around that pitch just looping it toward the plate. Mm -hmm. But the tilt would make it into more of a ground ball pitch correct. Much more so a strikeout pitch as well. Ball keeps the count full on Mazzara. Again, that felt better. I, I think what a pitching coach would say is number one, you've got to get further on top and you've got to finish out in front. You can't let that ball release from your hands back deep in the delivery. It, it's got to start downward. Baltimore leads Boston 5 to 2 after 4 at Fenway. And a strikeout for Peacock, his number three of the night. Astros fans, don't forget that we love showing your comments and reactions from Twitter during the telecast. Be sure to mention at Root Sports Southwest in your tweet for the best chance to see it on air. Carlos Beltran rolled into a double play. Colby Rasmus, a lefty. Colby's got a vote, huh? Or somebody's just hungry for cheese. I'm not sure which. Yeah, that could be it too. Ball one to Beltran. Three of 12 first pitch strikes for Peacock. Now 2 and 0. Oh. Beltran has. 1,530 runs batted in, 43rd on the all time RBI list, three behind Miguel Cabrera. And he's third among switch hitters. Two balls and a strike. And as much as we've said about the slider, he's gotten some swings and misses on that tonight. Jay Reed, is he going to be a pitcher now? Yeah. College pitcher and he was the Friday night starter for the Wildcats. Three and one now. Dodgers nothing, Yankees nothing, bottom of the fifth. This is the pitch that uh, A.J. Griffin has been getting a bit. Certainly, Evan Gaddis would tell you that uh, Griffin has gotten that pitch.
in the dirt and this one pops up in the air the runner advances to third base on ball four. That's a must block pitch not knocked down with your glove. It's a block pitch with the slider being delivered. Second walk for Peacock. Watch the approach here. It's not blocking 101 whatsoever. Adrian Beltre hit a home run in the second inning. Beltre now with another 30 home run season adds that to the resume which is extensive and Hall of Fame caliber. He hit 18 homers last year. He looks at ball one. Which what leads uh, most of us to think maybe the decline has begun right and then he bounces right back. <laughs> Well, he hit 48 and 04 with the Dodgers. Tough ballpark. Inside 2 and 0. Well, this is his fifth season of at least 30 home runs. That gives him 443 for his career. Three fouls it back, and it's two and one. Well, if you ask me, and I don't know this from down in the clubhouse or anything, who is the heart and soul of the Texas Rangers? To me, it's a quick response, Adrian Beltre. Yeah. He just exudes those leadership qualities on the field during the game, so it's pretty easy to reach that conclusion, I would think. Correa charging with the toss to Altuve, and Beltran is an easy out. He's not hustling. No runs a hit, two men left. We go to the bottom of the third, one nothing Rangers. Tonight's fan cam is brought to you by GulloAuto.com. See what we can find here, Ash. Well, you can find fans all over the place. I'll guarantee you that, but never enough for that matter. Yeah, I like uh, the different Astros looks. What are we looking for? Are we are we looking for something in particular? Nope. Anything interesting? Well, then. I think we accomplished our goal. <laughs> Bottom of the third coming. The Astros trail one to nothing. Marwin Gonzalez leads it off. 255 for Marwin. 12 homers, 40 runs batted in. Facing A.J. Griffin. And taking strike one. Griffin struck out the side in the second inning. Bouncer is a foul ball to Moreland and it's 0 and 2 to Marwin.
Griffin has made 20 starts for the Rangers in those 20 games. The Rangers are 13 and 7. But the last six starts, his ERA is 6.89. Arwin checked and on appeal third base umpire verifies that call Lance Barksdale one and two. There's your fan right there. That's a good fan cam shot. She approves. Odor and Moreland take care of out number one. The Astros Road Ahead is presented by DeMontron RV. September, October, we've got one more with the Rangers coming up. Thursday's an off day on the, on the calendar. Doesn't really look that way. It's a travel night for the Astros on up to Seattle. Three big ones with Seattle. The A's coming up for three, and then back home, the final homestand. Angels and Mariners coming in, a day off as the Astros need one with the final three coming up in Anaheim. Tongue out of cheek. Jason Castro. Comes to Odor. Two outs. That's six in a row set down by Griffin. After the single by Altuve in the first. And George Springer will try to rough things up here as far as the ride that A.J. Griffin is on. Springer grounded out the shortstop in the first. Just 18 games remain, including this one, for the Astros. They have 75 wins to get to 88, which some view as a lock on a playoff berth. They would have to win 13 of the 18. Popped up to the shortstop, Andrews, and it's a quick third inning for Griffin, who set down seven in a row and leads one to nothing. Homer by Adrian Beltre. Houston Methodist brings us our league leader, showing you slugging percentage for second baseman age 25 and under. Rogers Hornsby slugged 639 in 1921. Jose Pedro 540 for the 2000 Montreal Expos. Marcus Giles uh, in uh, 03 526. Rugnet Odor has a 520 slugging percentage this season. And Joe Gordon at 511 in 1940. That's pretty good company. You're in there with Rogers Hornsby. 1921 all time marks. Well, that tells you how good Odor has been. Yep. Foul that one away, strike one. He ripped a double in the second inning to right field. Odor is third among Major League second basemen in homers. And Dozier has 40. 
Gonna have a second baseman maybe lead the league in home runs this year. Yeah. Robinson Cano. Cano's over 30. Bobby Dore hit 22 homers at age 22 or younger for the 1940 Red Sox. He was 22. One ball, two strikes. I wonder how many many green monster shots were involved there. Oh yeah. By the way, I had the great pleasure of getting to know Bobby Dore. He was a hitting coach in Toronto for a couple of years, and one of the finest gentlemen you will ever meet. Two and two. Right, Peacock will face Moreland and Andrews after Odor. This is a tough out leading off an inning. Odor hits the Astros. 3 2. He doesn't walk much, just 17 bases on balls this year, but he did have a walk last night. Had a laugh at first base with his first base coach after that walk. <laughs> Has seven homers in his last 12 games. Whoa, that's not a walk. That's a strikeout looking. Odor is shocked. By well, the Angel Hernandez call, strikeout number four for Peacock. Castro really pulled this back to the plate. Not sure it was necessary. Part of that ball already in the strike zone. There are umpires plenty who do not like to see that pull job made, but in this case, already a strike. Mitch Moreland struck out in the second inning. That one away, they strike one. So a mixture of stuff from Brad Peacock. Trying to move pitches around. Throw different offerings at this Texas Ranger Club, which is third in run scored in the American League with 702. Warner looks at it, and it's one and one to Mitch. Peacock is 11 and 16 in his major league career with a 4.64 ERA. That foul takes it to one and two. Moreland kind of flies under the radar on this Texas team. He had 23 homers last year. 17th round draft choice, homegrown from the 07 draft from Amory, Mississippi, and Mississippi State. He plays that nice left handed first base and that factors in quite a bit I think but he also you know gives you enough numbers to fit in on that club. Curveball got him. Five strikeouts for Peacock. Elvis Andrews follows. Andrews is from Venezuela. An offensive player, 28 years old now. And he's been an all star a couple of times. Needless to say, Venezuela is very well represented in the major leagues. <laughs> Strike to Andrews. This is a sport with a lot of diversity right now. As you can see every night on your television set or at the ballpark. Bounce the first. Guriel makes it a one, two, three, fourth for Peacock. One nothing Texas.
Script is presented by authority of Houston Astros, LLC, and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Houston Astros, LLC. 1-0, the Rangers leading it on a Beltre second inning homer, his 30th of the year. The Astros have only one hit and one base runner in the first three innings off Griffin. Alex Bregman. Who hit a fly ball to left field on a 3 2 pitch looks at ball one leading off the home fourth. Griffin has retired seven in a row since the Altuve first inning single. Change up comes in for a high strike call and it's one and one. Griffin 5 and 0. Oh. He's won five straight starts against the Astros. Pop back out of play one and two the only start in which he had a no decision was his first against Houston that was against Brad Peacock back in April of 2013 he pitched well but didn't get involved in the decision giving up two runs and in six innings. Bregman homered off him at Texas last start against the Astros. Two and two and Bregman has really been providing that kind of power to go with the hitting streak that he had until last night. Strike him out. Number four. Looking now at our Ford spray chart. We talked about Jose Altuve. We have quite a bit today. Through August 20th, you can see the numbers. He used the entire field. And he hit a lot of balls to left field. He's had more power in doing so this year since. August 21st though he has completely lost sight of right field he has brought the numbers down in center and left field has been kind of the main spot and a lot of times as we've talked about ground balls to the third baseman. Good at bat here in his first A.B. of the night. Yeah, he hit a low curveball for that single to left center field on a 2 2 count. Goes for a high fastball and there's strike one. Altuve is now six for 16 in his career against Griffin. He could push a bunt easily for a hit to the first base side of the pitcher. One and one, but a lot of hitters, you know, it seems to be almost a trap for them because they don't want to take the bait sometimes and bunt into an out if it's not a well placed bunt. Well, that's not a bunt, but that's an Altuve deep drive for a homer. 1 1 ball game, number 24 for Jose Altuve. That's 94 runs batted in and 99 runs scored. Well, Brownie, we're going to have to talk about Altuve before the game every night because he looks like he's back. Solid base hit to left center his first AB, and now. He keeps filling up that left field zone, but he can fill it up that way anytime he wants. What a year for Altuve. Got a pitch to handle and handles it well. Kind of clears out with that pitch coming down and in. There's no question he's got plenty of power to hit the home run ball now. Way up high on that left field wall to tie it at one. Carlos Correa next. Ball one to him. Altuve hit a thunderous shot for his 194th hit of the year. Curve ball called a strike. Evens the count of one and one on Correa. One hopper to third, so far, two outs. Altuve since August 20th had hit three homers in 21 games, but his batting average was only 176. So this could be the breakout night for him. Guriel struck out in the second inning. Griffin now has allowed 25 homers in 110 innings. Strike one on Guriel. 
Starting at first base again tonight. He was at that position last night as well. Altuve back to 340 with the two hits tonight. And he's up three points then since the start of the game. He started the night with a seven point lead over Dustin Pedroia in batting average. One ball, two strikes. Altuve had three hits more than Mookie Betts to lead the American League in that department when the night started. And then Gaddis is on deck. Fouled away. And the count stays one and two. Altuve now has driven in 14 runs against Texas this year. Guriel strikes out. We go to the fifth inning after the fifth strikeout of the night for Griffin. Altuve evens it at one with number 24. West Airlines, transparency, low fares, nothing too high. By Jack in the Box. Taste the all new Jack's Brew House Bacon Burger today at Jack in the Box for a limited time only at participating restaurants. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, donating $100 for each Astros home run and $200 for each Correa home run to Houston Children's Charity. Brad Peacock in a 1 1 game. Goes to the fifth inning. Fastball in tight to Jerks and Profar. Here's ball one as the Rangers have three hits and the Astros two. Profar grounded out on a 3 1 offering. He looks at that one, even the count at one and one. In the air, and Correa chases it out into left field, calling for it and catching it in front of Marvin Gonzalez. One down. Tweener ball, outfielder's ball until called off, or, or rather, infielder's ball until called off by the outfielder. In this case, Correa called, never got called off. He stays with it. Marwin may have felt like he called, and they need to talk that over. Chirinos grounded out earlier. And strike one to the catcher. He also is another Venezuelan born player. 32 years old. He had been a third baseman until 09. One and one to Robinson Chirinos. He 
Peacock has pretty good life on the fastball in terms of movement. One and two. That's important for him. Throwing an average 92 mile per hour fastball this year. That's not chopped liver, but it's not up in that extreme neighborhood that so many pitchers are these days. Fly ball out to left field. Marwin on the track. Two outs. That didn't sound that good coming off the bat. Every Wednesday night home game is one dollar hot dog Wednesday presented by Nolan Ryan beef. The next dollar dog buffet is tomorrow night for more information. Visit Astros.com slash dollar dogs or you can call one eight seven seven nine Astros. Quite a bargain. Coming up tomorrow. Carlos Gomez has a strikeout and a ground ball double near third base. How's that one for strike one. Gomez said in the article in the Houston Chronicle today he was just trying to fit in with this fine Texas team. Help them win. Over shortstop out to left center. Marwin is there after a rangy run for out number three. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning, 1-1. One, one. Park bottom five. Come celebrate your birthday the Astros way. Cheer on your favorite team while throwing a birthday party at Minute Maid Park. For more info, visit Astros.com or call 713-259-8996. Speaking of birthdays, one of my favorite people in the ballpark, Ray. It is his birthday. I think he's 30 today. That's Ray's 30? <laughs> he's gonna love me for saying that. But a huge birthday shout out to Ray who helps me wire up I can hear you guys perfectly because of Ray he does a great job on audio it's Ray's birthday today yeah I didn't know that there Happy he birthday, is. Ray. oh he's so mad at us what a way to spend a birthday happy birthday buddy we got him on spy cam one ball at two strikes to Evan Gaddis he struck out looking in the second so he doesn't want to take anything close here he's been forewarned by Angel Hernandez tonight A little too far though to get the strike call for Griffin and it's two and two for AJ. At Minute Maid Park he's two and oh with a five point two five ERA. Got a skies one on the infield. Morland looks over and Elvis Andrews is tripping on the mound and catching it. Tremendous concentration by Andrews. You know you see this in some ballparks where there are bullpen mounds on the field of play. Uh, you don't often see that around the mound. That was one of the best reactions by a pitcher I, I have ever seen. 
immediately pointing up, not necessary, but just getting out of the way and enabling the uh, sure-footed infielders to make the play. Do not practice this <laughs> in your backyard. <laughs> yeah. It's what you call a routine major league out. Difficult play. What's the degree of difficulty on that? 9.2? Might be higher than that from what I just saw. Colby Rasmus is crowded on that one. Ball one. Rasmus struck out in the second inning when Griffin struck out the side. Colby takes and it's a two ball no strike count. Chris Devensky is getting loose for Houston. Oh, he's throwing more pitches than Iron Mike this year. I think that should be his nickname. He, he's just ready all the time. 3 and 0. Iron Mike used to be the name of the pitching machines that were used in baseball back in the day. Hmm. Asmus has a four pitch walk. First walk of the night for Griffin. Let's take a look at our Lexus defensive ratings for the Texas Rangers. A peek at some of those outfielders last night. Nomar Mazar throws well. He's in left field tonight. Carlos Gomez has uh, found himself in center field. We've got him listed as run on. He, he throws well, but inaccurately. Carlos Beltran in right field uh, at this stage of his career, a guy who once was. Uh, a fellow you wouldn't want to run on, but right now the yellow light. So Mazzara, the, the key arm out there. Marwin Gonzalez grounded to second in the third. With the shift on, Profar's between second and third. There's ball one. And he's on the grass trying to take that bunt away from Marwin. Chirinos goes out to the mound. It's a rather bizarre. Ejection of Joe Madden last night by Joe West. As the Cub skipper apparently was trying to stall for time for a roll of Chapman to warm up. And he told his catcher to go out to the mound and wanted the infielders to converge around the mound without costing them a manager visit. And Joe West threw the manager out of the game when he said, Well, that counts as a visit. What we were hearing. Anyway. Joe West is apparently writing some new rules into the book. <laughs> Just on the move. But I would, if, if I could uh, take over at this moment, and it's not likely to happen from what I hear, but uh, every visit to the mound would be a visit, whether it's my catch or shortstop, whatever the case may be, coach, uh, it's a visit. Just kind of stop the stuff. There's the out at second and the throw to first, and Elvis Andrews has himself an inning. Catching that pop up on the mound and then turning the 6 3 double play. It's an Elvis Andrews bottom of the fifth, and it's 1 1.
one. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Tonight's pitching performance is powered by Kubota. Who better than Sandy Koufax back in the day? Perfect game thrown against the Cubs. Dodgers won that game, as I recall, 1-0. You look at the board, now that's not the one that I recall. It looked like a bunch of hits for, oh, that's the World Series there, up on that board. He was the, uh, he was the guy. And there were so many great stories about guys that tried to face Sandy Koufax and how overpowered they were. Tremendous left-hander in the Hall of Fame. Omar Mazar with a two hopper. There's a one pitch out number one for Brad Peacock as the sixth inning gets underway. Mazar grounding out to Guriel. That's eight straight outs for Brad Peacock. Certainly a welcome outing. But the way the Astros starting pitching has been stretched with the injuries and then the uh, short outings this season. Davinsky has been warming up in the bullpen. Peacock now moves along to face Carlos Beltran. Not hurting his cause personally either at all. Peacock. Two pitches, two outs in the sixth. I smell a gold glove coming. I might be smelling some leather burning the way that ball was hit. Watch too. this. Right to the glove side. Good fortune shines sometimes. That was pretty slick. Now it's Beltre who dropped down on a knee as he hit his homer in the second and he grounded out into a force play. Strike one. Odor is on deck. Or will be. And Beltre just smiles and probably says you know where that ball should have wound up. In for strike two to Beltre. Making a point with Angel Hernandez. I was going to invite you to, to, to dinner until you made that call on me. Yeah. One and two. In Peacock's career, he's four and eight at Minute Maid Park with a 4.94 ERA in 26 games. That one bounces for ball two. There we go. There's the blocking mode on that slider with a couple of strikes. Rangers are 44 and 28 at Minute Maid Park. Springer comes in in shallow right field. That's a seven pitch sixth inning for Brad Peacock. He's retired 10 in a row. And it's 1 1.
Saturday next Monday for your chance to win two round trip tickets on Southwest Airlines and our Want to Get Away sweepstakes. See the winning word during the game and visit rootsports.com slash want to get away to enter and win. 18 games remaining, including this one. And for some of these guys, they've never played this deep into a season. There's a lot of rookies on this Astros roster. That includes Alex Bregman, who even admitted last year he wasn't prepared to play this deep into any season uh, coming out of college and lost a bunch of weight before that. But this time around, feeling much better. And A.J. Hinch mentioned this, too. You know, last year they were worried about Carlos Correa playing this deep in the season. What would his body do? Jason Castro makes it two to one. Houston with a deep drive to right. Number 11 of the year. He's looking strong in September, Julia. That's 32 runs batted in for Castro. Who arrived with that first pitch for a no doubter to right. Oh, that was an impressive bolt. He's got the power. There's no question about that. It's a pitch to handle here. And A.J. Griffin can give up the long ball. You pointed that out from his last outing. How many people paid for those seats tonight? <laughs> Fouled away. There's strike one. Now Griffin now has surrendered 26 homers in 112 innings. Astro made some solid contact. The Astros have a one run lead. Each club with three hits. Two solo homers for Houston. Altuve hit one earlier, his 24th. Springer's 0 for 2. George with a foul tip there. Fouls behind, no balls, two strikes. Astros have hit 184 long balls this year. Kind of see how it gets contagious though. That swing by Springer for me is brought about because Castro and Altuve have launched already tonight. Good point. Flair to right. Odor. One down. Julia, sorry to interrupt. Uh, <laughs> no. Jason Castro so no need rudely to hit that homer right Absolutely. in the middle of your story. Yeah. I welcome the Astros home runs here in my stories. But back to Bregman is playing deep into the season. He's a rookie and, and hasn't played in September baseball and so this time around he wanted to plan for a little bit better he lost a lot of weight last year at the end of the season and that was one of the things but AJ Hinch did mention with some of these guys that he, he's got to watch them however they need to win every single night so he doesn't really have the option to rest guys when they need them. DH though it is where he can get these guys at least a half day but he did say some of the relievers are the guys that he's worried about more than the position players Alex Bregman has tons of energy he's more on the hyper side and he'll grind it out. He took ball one there. He's 0 for 2. And outside for a 2 0 count. Will Harris is working in the Astros bullpen. Red Peacock has retired 10 in a row. Two and one. It's Harris and Devensky. Three balls and a strike to Alex and one reason he's done so much damage is he's worked his way into favorable counts. He's hitting 436. He's ahead in the count. Center fielder Gomez moves in a few steps. Two outs. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices with MLB.TV Premium, which includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Jose Leclerc warming up for Texas. Jose Altuve is two for two for Houston, a single and a homer. Ray on deck. Meaning uh, overshift for the Rangers around again for Altuve. He shows bunt this time. Now they really haven't changed from that infield configuration. Altuve taking ball one, but showing the bunt. And now it's 2 0. 
The last 30 days he had hit 223 with a 656 OPS coming into this game. Perhaps you might think he was due. Ground ball off the glove of Profar. And Altuve's on for the third straight time. He makes a wide turn. He falls. Here's the throw, and Moreland tags him out. Altuve made a very aggressive turn, and then he fell trying to get back to first, looking at that loose dirt there. It's out number three, but Castro has made it two to one. Home run number 11. In history is presented by M.D. Anderson and quite a momentous occasion. September 13th, 1965, 500th career homer for Willie Mays, and it came at the Astrodome. Has there ever been a better player than Willie Mays? Many will say no. Say hey, kid. Played so much of his career there in Candlestick. That's it with the, uh, the wire fence that you see beyond. A lot of wins. I have a feeling he might have hit more home runs in his career than he already did if had he played in another yard, but he was pretty good as it was. Two to one Astros. Will Harris comes in for the seventh inning. Brad Peacock retired the last 10 men he faced in six innings. He allowed the Rangers three hits and one run, walking two, fanning five. Rugnet Odor the batter. Harris pumps in strike one. Odor doubled to right and he struck out looking. Fine outing for Brad Peacock throwing 79 pitches. Broken bat looper caught by Guriel. Well Harris got that little cutter in on the hands and that's been long needed now against Odor 58 games already on the year one and two you never look at that on the back end of the bullpen guy ERA a good one that whip exceptional 10 straight shutout appearances now as he's gotten on a roll again you know early on as he made the all star team he was on as good a roll as anybody fantastic run for Will Harris Mitch Moreland has struck out both times tonight shift remains on for him. And it's ball one. 37 games for Will Harris without allowing an extra base hit from April 7th through mid July. Her ball makes it 2 0. Oh. Last night he threw his 10th consecutive scoreless outing. In those 10 games, nine and two thirds innings, four hits, no runs, three walks, 11 strikeouts, a 129 batting average against Will Harris. He gets a bad looking swing there, and it's two and one. 
Mariano Rivera had that great larger kind of a cutter sailor whatever it was Harris a smaller version but you saw the same reaction there by Moreland mm -hmm. last night he threw only 11 pitches in his inning that's a beautiful pitch two and two did not cut that one just running that four seamer to the outside edge Andrews is on deck. And the curveball gets a strikeout. Get a special gift for the Astros fan in your life and have your special message become a part of Minute Maid Park forever with the Astros Brick Paver program. Visit Astros.com slash bricks for more details. Elvis Andrews was quite the shortstop in that fifth inning tonight. He's 0 for 2 as a hitter in this game. Lined out to center. Colby Rasmus reaches up, cannot hold it. And here's a play at second. Colby with the throw to Altuve, not in time. Andrews reaches second base on the liner to Rasmus. Colby got fooled. I mean, that's the bottom line on a ball that was pure scalded right here. It carried more than Colby anticipated. Colby is a whale of an outfielder. And it's not often you're going to see him get burned. He did right here. Still waiting for the official scorer to rule on that. By the way, Altuve was credited with a single to end the sixth inning. Then he was thrown out trying to get back to first base. This is ruled a hit for Andrews. And that's hit number four, his 28th double, bringing up Profar. And tight for ball one. Profar's 0 for 2. We talked to Friday night in that Cubs telecast with the Astros here about the versatility the Cubs had in several of their young players. Profar fits that theme for the Rangers, too. You kind of have to become that way when you've got some big stars playing in front of you. Good point. Two and zero. Oh, we were hearing that the Cubs skipper Joe Madden likes his young players to move around and play different positions. And one of his theories is that it helps them not to worry so much about the offensive side of the game, but to concentrate on learning these positions. That may subconsciously help them. Not to overthink the hitting part. Something is working for Joe Madden. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I, I, I never would have imagined a major league manager would say, I think by keeping you off guard defensively, we'll help you offensively. <laughs> yeah. Who are we to question yeah. his success, I mean, right? He's been fantastic. And for a strike. Pro far now has a 3 1 pitch coming next. Chirinos on deck. The Rangers have come from behind to win 43 times in their 86 games. That's tops in the majors. 22,343 the paid attendance. Big cut. It's 3 and 2 now. Two year old Will Harris from Houston and LSU tries to get a big out in a race. And a curveball as the steal of third gets Andrews over there to that corner, puts Profar on at the other corner with two outs. You know, that's on Will Harris. Yes, completely forgetting about the man at second. Greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile showing you one run games and the Rangers are the kings of one run games this year. Last seven years you can see the top teams. The Rangers uh, this season have gone 32 and 10 for a 761 percentage. None of those clubs over the last 10 years 
have made the World Series. So you win one run games it's supposed to toughen you over the course of the season right and it it uh, it hardens the metal and all those sort of isms that get thrown around and clubs haven't made the World Series so I don't know what is most valuable going into the postseason. Now the young slugger Joey Gallo comes up to pinch hit for Robinson Chirinos. Gallo put on a monstrous display of power. In early hitting today. He is quite capable of hitting tape measure shots. But he's one for 16 and that one hit a homer this season in his major league time. It's been back and forth mostly at triple A this year. He fouls it back there strike one Gallo 22 years old from Henderson Nevada. Was drafted after the first round supplemental pick the 39th player drafted in 2012. Last year he had 108 at bats with the Rangers with six homers 14 runs batted in a 204 average he's been strikeout prone. First came up to the big leagues in 2013. Nice to see the signs. Eggman's playing close to the bag at third, trying to hold the runner there. Harris missing on Gallo. One and one. Chirinos was 0 for 2 while he was in the game. Gallo was recalled as a September call up from Round Rock, September 6th. This is his third stint with the Rangers this year. He has started three games at DH and won at first base. Throw goes to first on Profar. This year, Gallo hit 240 at Round Rock. He belted 25 homers there and drove in 66 runs in 102 games. I wonder how the the Rangers viewed that season. 240 playing in that ballpark, probably not what they were hoping. No. In tight to him. Two balls and a strike. Harris with runners at first and third, trying to finish this top of the seventh inning. Foul back, and it's two and two to Gallo. Make no mistake about the way Will Harris is attempting to pitch Gallo hard with that cutter in. Pretty well documented. Gallo has a hole on the inside. There you see it. Everything in that direction. Drop him out. And that's a big one for Harris. Number two for him. No runs a hit. Two men stranded. Two to one Houston at seventh inning stretch time.
Get tickets for the final game of the Lone Star Series of the Texas Lottery Astros Scratch Off Promotion. Bring your Astros Lottery ticket to the Minute Maid Park box office. Get two bullpen box tickets for only $25 each. Visit astros.com slash lottery for more details. We will see Yuli Guriel coming up, who's been swinging a pretty warm bat, hot bat, if you will, uh, since he's been up. And the, the question with him when he got here was, would he be in game shape? How long would it take for him to be able to play every day? And he's actually been playing a lot at first base, uh, a position he's never played before. But this is all new to Guriel, and we talk about the transition he's making. But a, back in Cuba, he would play three, four days in a row and then have days off where he didn't even have to come to the ballpark. So things are much different here in the major leagues, all an adjustment. Even in Japan, guys, there's a, always a day off each, each week. They at least have one day off. So much different here in the major leagues. Carlos Correa is 0 for 2, taking strike one. How much was he making in Cuba anyway? One ball, one strike. <laughs> I, I doubt the pay was extremely high. <laughs> no. Correa takes the looping curveball. That's a strike. Average curveball velocity for A.J. Griffin, 68 miles per hour this year. That was a hanger that Carlos just took. Alex Claudio, a left-hander, is getting loose for the Rangers, and Luke Gregerson for the Astros. It's two and two to Correa. Ooh, that's strike three. And we saw that earlier on Gaddis. Yeah, that was a very passive at bat. A couple of pitches in or third to begin with, and you can see the the pitches early in this one getting a piece of the outside edge. Wonder how much that left shoulder is impacting Carlos Correa at the moment. Good point. Guriel has two punch outs tonight. Big cut there for strike one. Gaddis is on deck. 88 pitches for Griffin. Pitching well again. Back into center field. Gomez. Two outs. Yellowwood happens to be bringing the lumber. And we're talking about Evan Gaddis. The seventh inning on. Evan Gaddis leads the club in home runs. Launched one last night. And this one a little earlier in the season in Chicago against the White Sox. But Nine times from the seventh inning on, he is homered. And again, that leads the club. And he has had some big swings. Gave the Astros life in the ninth last night. And a sunflower seed shower. Curve, strike one. That is 0 for 2. Orioles five Red Sox three top of the eighth at Fenway. Xander Bogarts at his 19th homer. Griffin's living on that outside corner now. 0 and 2. J.J. Hardy has hit his ninth homer. Nolan Reimold his sixth for Baltimore. Curve ball and a strikeout. That's number seven for Griffin. Through seven, two to one Houston.
You see the game summary brought to you by the DeMontrand Auto Group of a two to one game. Each club of four hits, no errors. Griffin pitching well, but he's given up the homers to Altuve and Castro. And Brad Peacock also very fine tonight. Six innings of three hit, one run baseball, walking two and fanning five. Will Harris pitched a scoreless seventh inning. And now with the Altuve and Castro homers, it's a two to one lead for Luke Gregerson. Good numbers for Luke. 51 in the third innings, just 30 hits allowed for those home runs against him. Whip well under the one mark. He is keeping guys off base. Carlos Gomez with strike one. We have several changes defensively for the Astros. We'll get to those right after this next pitch. Gregerson throws a ball that makes it one and one. Well, as we check around, we see Jake Marisnik has moved into the lineup. He's the center fielder. Colby Rasmus takes over and left. Marwin Gonzalez moves to first base. One and two to Gomez. That's a, a very normal sight with Gregerson. 55% of the swings from right hand hitters this year have been swings and misses against Luke Gregerson, and likely the vast majority of those on that slider. Gomez is down on strikes. In fact, we're talking about just over 70% of the time the swings and misses on the slider from the right hand hitters. Devastating pitch. Gregerson has Gomez talking to himself. This wasn't even a really good one left up and off the outside edge. Even cutting down on that swing, Gomez swings through it. Omar Mazzara is 0 for 2 with a walk. Gregerson threw only 11 pitches last night. As did Harris. That allows them to get back in for a second straight night without feeling probably as fatigued. Not to say uh, all these guys aren't fatigued this time of year though. And AJ talked about that. Julia mentioned it earlier. The guys in the bullpen are the keys as far as who is available from one game to the next. It's kind of like the, the folks that run marathons. I don't know how many walls you hit over the course of a marathon, but those walls will come up on players. One and two. Ferguson making his 53rd appearance. And Giles has 61. Foul ball. We're not sure if he would be available for any pitching at all tonight because Giles threw two innings last night. In fact, I, I should have said I wouldn't have the faintest idea on earth what a marathon runner goes through, Brownie. I think well, you might have a clue, but no. Are you kidding? Come on. Bro. I was trying to do some statistical analysis, Brownie. Okay. Oh, that's a nice location for that slider. Two punch outs in a row. Academy Sports and Outdoors and the Houston Astros are hitting home runs for Houston. Most dingers in the months of September and October in the regular season. We're not talking postseason. 1927, a year that's often talked about with the Yankees, Babe Ruth up there, Albert Bell, or Joey if you preferred in 1995. Hank Greenberg, Ralph Kiner, Greg Vaughn, and Barry Bonds, pretty good power names on that list. I guess the the big boys do well at the end of the season. Carlos Beltran is 0 for 2 with a walk. Strike one. Ferguson looks sharp tonight with that slider. When he's on with it, nobody hits it. The ZRA is 1.40 the last 27 games. One and one with Beltre on deck. Now one and two. Backdoor effort. Maybe a little extra around the corner there.
Got him on strikes. He struck out the side in the eighth inning, snapping off those sliders to maintain the two to one Houston lead. Talking about Jimmy Wynn, one of the Astros in Major League Baseball's greats, you know, where he ranked seasonally in the National League, five top tens in Dinger, slugging four times in the top ten, ten times in the top six in walks. He walked a lot on base percentage, therefore very good. He also ran well. Jimmy Wynn led the league in walks in 69, almost 150 that year, led in steals, 43 in 65. Scored over 100 runs four times. Just did it all. Jimmy Wynn was one whale of a major league player. Alex Claudio's warming up. Jonathan Lucroy has come in to do the catching after Gallo pinch hit for Chirinos in the seventh inning. So those two guys the uh, new battery at this point of the game for the Rangers. Claudio three and one in forty five and a third innings with a two point nine eight ERA and a whip of one point thirty ash. One of those left handers that really should be what the Astros hitters so all these right hand hitters should want to see. The Rangers again have some very good arms coming out of their pen. Colby Rasmus is 0 for one with a walk. Looks at ball one. AJ Griffin in seven very good innings, allowed four hits, two runs. He walked one and fans seven, throwing 92 pitches, 56 for strikes. That evens the count of one and one. Tanner Shepherds is warming up now for Texas. He has returned pitching well to that Ranger bullpen. They really can use him. The absence of Jeremy Jeffress. Two balls and one strike. There's Ken Giles getting ready for the ninth inning. Beltre, Odor, and Moreland are due up. The Astros pushing for some insurance here so they can get more than a one run lead to face that trio. Slash foul. Watch out. It's hit hard. Nice effort there by Colby to stay in and maybe shoot one to left field. I don't know if he asked if that pitch was low, but Marvin Gonzalez is on deck. Jason Castro do up third. That's the reason for the selection of this lefty. Claudio's from San Juan, Puerto Rico, 27th round choice of the Rangers in 2010. Broken bat roller. Here comes the third soccer profile with an excellent play.
third baseman with shortstop skills. Well, we took some shots at left field. Uh, just not going to shoot it through when it's that deep in the kitchen. Happy folks out there. Hoping Marwin Gonzalez can do something for them. Marwin is 0 for 2. He's hit the ball on the ground both times. Strike one on the slider to Marwin. When Claudio pitched in Texas against the Astros September 2nd, he gave up two earned runs in one third of an inning. He walked three and gave up a hit in that game. Not a hard thrower. Showing bunt. Marwin looks at a pitch outside. One and one. Claudio's worked three and two thirds scoreless innings. His last two trips to the mound. He was recalled from Round Rock July 8th. It's good reliance on the grip on the changeup. Arm came through well. This Ranger bullpen has an ERA of 4.69. Just looking at the numbers of this team, as you pointed out last night, it's rather difficult to quantify what the Rangers have done with those numbers. They roughly give up as many runs as they score, but they find a way to win the close ones. Strikeout. Two outs. Now Jason Castro. Castro with the go-ahead homer in the sixth inning, leading off that frame. He's one for two. Two solo homers for the Astros tonight. Castro hit his previous homer at Texas off A.J. Griffin September 2nd. It hard, but Profar's there and makes that play to send this game to the ninth, two to one, Houston. Sports is presented by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by Toyota, let's go places. Brad Peacock got it started for the Astros. Then it was Will Harris, Luke Gregerson, and now Ken Giles for the ninth inning. Giles worked two innings last night. He did not give up a hit or allow a base runner. He comes in with a one run lead. Facing Beltre, Odor, and Moreland in the ninth inning. Ken Giles, another guy on that top list of swings and misses from right hand hitters. 42% of the swings from righties have come up empty against Giles, who has been dynamite here in the second half. That whip overall in 61 appearances, excellent. 
And over the last 12 games, only seven hits allowed in 13 innings. Adrian Beltre led off the second inning with a homer. He's one for three. Giles delivers ball one at 97 miles per hour to Beltre with Odor on deck. Giles has converted each of his last nine save chances. Ground ball to short. Correa backing up. One out. Julia. Thanks, Brownie. It's time to announce the winner of our Chevy Stroke poll. Thanks to everyone who voted. And follow us at Root Sports SW. We asked you which position player would make the best starting pitcher. You guys voted Carlos Correa 30%, but that's a close one. We even had some write ins for some other guys on this team. Let's look back at what we were talking about last night. Watch this. Put him on the mound. Yeah, but I think Oriel had called for the slider, so that was uh, one of those heaters on the slider call, but he, he brought it, didn't he? Rugnet Odor looks at strike one on the inside edge. He doubled a right in the second. He's one for three. Might be the way right there, Brownie. Stay inside on Odor. Yeah. What a slider. Oh, it too. Now, Giles defines what we were talking about early in the game with Brad Peacock that slider starting downward like a fastball and then breaking from there. Just uh, optically for the hitter, very, very difficult to recognize. One ball, two strikes. Mitch Moreland is on deck. Giles is fourth in strikeouts in the American League among relief pitchers with 88. Got him to swing and a pitch in the dirt, but he's going to get on first base. The ball gets away from Castro. And on the strikeout, Odor reaches first. Watch Jason Castro on this slider in the dirt. Is he down both knees on the ground and glove blocking the five hole? No. And it, it costs here as the ball hits the shin guard and Karam's off to his right. Strikeout and wild pitch. One out, one on for Mitch Moreland. He has struck out three times in this game. And feel shifted around for him. Orland takes a strike. Astros have a chance to move up on some teams in the wild card race tonight. Detroit has lost eight to one at home to Minnesota. Tigers now 77 and 67. Baltimore is losing 5-3 in the eighth. To our Boston is losing to Baltimore 5 3 in the eighth. That's the ball. It's one and one. A lot of the umpi unpaid umpires here disagreed with that call. Yeah. Toronto's losing to Tampa Bay. Now that's a final 6 to 2 Tampa Bay. Runner takes off. Here's the throw. High. And not in time to get him. A stolen base for Odor, getting the potential tying run to second base. The count's one and two. Odor does it with a, a number of weapons, not only the long ball bat, but he'll run the base as well. He just shakes it up. 13 steals for Odor. Elvis Andrus is on deck.
Correa is trying to cut into that Odor lead. He crept in there and then Odor back to second on the turn towards second by Giles. Swing and a miss for a strikeout on Moreland. Two outs. Once again, the slider in the dirt. This time, Castro able to corral it in the glove. That's a strikeout pitch. That is not a mistake, that slider in the dirt. That's where he wants it. The crowd is up. The two strikeouts for Giles. The Astros pitching staff has a dozen punch outs tonight. Andrews doubled the center off the glove of Rasmus in the seventh inning. He's one for three. Altuve kicking in towards second. That's ball one. Jerks and Profar's on deck. Each club with four hits and no errors tonight. The Rangers have left five. The Astros have stranded one. The Rangers are seven and one in one run games against the Astros this year. They have 12 one run wins the last two years against Houston. Deep drive center field. Way back Marisnik. Over the shoulder and that's up on the hill. All the way to the top to tie the game at two. Streaking to third base. Here's the throw from Correa. And Andrus is in. With a triple. That is an absolutely devastating run right there. With a strikeout yielding a base runner that tie scores to tie the game. And I think Jake actually got fooled on this ball initially. I don't know that he gets there anyway. Now, there was an instant where Jake was frozen. But to have a strikeout come around and score the tying run. To me, very tough to stomach. Odor scores it. Andrews on his seventh triple gets a 60 second RBI. It's two to two, and Profar's the batter. Profar's 0 for 2 with a walk. That will give the Rangers a 3 to 2 lead. RBI single to left by Profar, his 19th run batted in. Look, these runs are on Giles, no doubt about it. He would not have faced the last two hitters. Now that strikeout resulted in an out. Six hits for Texas. Now here comes Fred Strom to the mound. Now that's tough to handle. This is not an easy message right here. You've got the guy at the plate you want to get. Robinson Chirinos has had his struggles with the bat this year. But this is not a message about hey you need to do this different than what you're doing. Jonathan Lucroy came into that nine spot in the lineup. So Lucroy hard hitting catcher will be batting for the first time in this game. He's hitting 303 10 homers 25 runs batted in. As a Ranger overall 300 including his Milwaukee stats 23 homers 75 runs batted in. Yeah I said Chirinos. Seeing the pinch hit scenario. Yeah. Left of that pinch hitter now the runner takes off Profar and the throw from Castro. Not in time to stop him from advancing. Another wild pitch for Ken Giles. It's 13 wild pitches for Giles this season. Well, the Astros have the most. And 
Now you can size that up as you will. Now they have 90 wild pitches this year. Good broad. Fouls it away. One and one. The Astros have the lead after eight innings. Their record is 69 and one. Now they'll be batting in the bottom of the ninth with Springer, Bregman, and Altuve do up. Ground ball third on through Bregman. And here is the play at the plate on Pro Far, the tag by Castro. He is out. Bregman made a good recovery after failing to field the grounder, but it's a tough ninth inning for Houston. As the Astros come in for the bottom of the ninth, they now trail it three to two. The ninth, three to two. They use that strikeout and wild pitch to get him started. Then Bregman, failing to field the ball hit on the ground, throws to the plate and gets Profar. It's not easy when you've made an error and it feels like it's very costly as Bregman did, but he reacted beautifully and turned it into simply the final out of the inning. Now the Rangers will call on a different closer, Tanner Sheppers. He's worked two and a third scoreless innings, retiring all seven batters faced over three games since he returned from the 60 day disabled list. And that was on September 6th. 12 and 5 lifetime with a 412 ERA. He pitched Saturday and Sunday at Anaheim. He got his first major league win uh, since the middle of last year at Colorado. Facing only one batter Saturday. And the Rangers are really pleased with the way he's been throwing the ball. So he gets the save opportunity tonight instead of Sam Dyson. Yeah, and it's not like the Rangers are in some kind of do or die scenario right now. Shepherds has thrown only two and a third innings on the season. But he's got nothing but zeros behind that two and a third other than one strikeout. His last save was August 6, 2013. George Springer leads it off. He's off for three. Strike one. Alex Claudio can be the winning pitcher. He worked a one, two, three, eighth with a strikeout. Springer tops one foul. 0 oh and two. New right fielder is Jared Hoying. He played there last night. Breaking pitch outside makes it one and two for Tanner Shepherds. He's going to mainstay in previous years in the Ranger bullpen. 
really give them a lift now that he's come back healthy at the end of this season after being on the 60 day DL. Thinking about some of the blemishes that can get shown in September. For example, the Texas Rangers, Nomar Mazzara, is he their right fielder come postseason time? Drive to left center field by Springer. And it's caught by Gomez. Cutting in front of his left fielder who had made the call. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder if Jeff Bannister is kind of showing what is on his mind defensively for his club. Omar Mazar had been the right fielder all season long, but it appears right now that the confidence might be a bit low there. Gomez with the catch. Alex Bregman's 0 for 3. Check swing foul. Shepherds is 29. He's from Mission Viejo, California. Went to Fresno State. Edmund trying to get aboard for Jose Altuve is on deck. Slider misses. Shepard has been uh, with the Rangers since 2012. Which 42 times out of the Texas bullpen last year. Outside the right field line. There's Hoying coming over and it's well out of play. One and two. The Rangers need one more save to tie a club record with 52. He swung and a slider in the dirt and that's strike three. Well, the appeal went down to first. The throw went down to first. Two outs. Yeah, I really hate to see that call made by a home plate umpire on the swing. Did he go through? Probably, without a doubt. Nice job by Luke Croy to keep this in front. Well, the Astros are down to their final out. Jose Altuve has three of their four hits, including a fourth inning homer. Carlos Correa is on deck. Out to center field. Gomez with the final out. And the Rangers win it 3 to 2. They are 15 and 3 against the Astros this season. They have 13 one run wins over the Astros. 2015 and 2016 combined. Texas three, Houston two. The Rangers go to 33 and 10 in one-run games. Back in a moment. 